The following is a brief summary of a presentation made at the first annual international symposium on light sources in dentistry. When dental composites are placed into a cavity preparation and light cured with a blue light, they shrink towards their center of mass. And that shrinkage is resisted by the adhesive forces that are holding the composite to the tooth structure, setting up a tug of war between the shrinking composite and the bonded tooth. This tug of war produces internal stresses within the composite, and these can be deleterious in that they can reduce the adhesion of the composite to the tooth structure or reduce the properties of the composite itself. So the question is, how can we reduce the potentially deleterious stresses that are formed during polymerization shrinkage of composites? There have been a variety of ways that have been developed for relieving stresses, some of them relating to the formulation of the composite. In particular, what we're interested in right here is looking at how can we affect the curing rate of the composite. And studies have shown that by increasing the inhibitor concentration in the material, we can actually reduce the curing rate and therefore the contraction stress rate, as you see in this slide. As we go down from the top graphs to the bottom, we're increasing the inhibitor concentration and reducing the contraction stress rate. It's also possible to modify the initiators that are used in the composite to slow down the contraction rate. There are a variety of stress relieving mechanisms that can be related to how we cure the composite as well. We know that the curing of the composite and the total stress generated is a function of the total energy we deliver and that the curing rate is related to the irradiance and that we can cure at a lower irradiance and reduce rate. So studies have shown us that the final stress, but not the rate, increases with increased total energy of polymerization. So this slide shows as we go from bottom to top, we're increasing the total amount of energy delivered, but at a constant irradiance. And the total stress goes up due to the total energy increase. However, if we keep the total energy constant and just change the irradiance, what we change is not the total stress, but just the stress rate. So this slide shows that as we go from 200 to 400 to 800 milliwatt per centimeter squared initial radiances, we are increasing the slope of the curve of stress generation versus time. And in other words, it's telling us that the material is curing at a faster rate, and this is producing higher stress. And this plot shows maximum force generation versus time, or force generation rate, as a function of irradiance showing that as we increase the irradiance, we definitely increase the force rate produced. Other meth methods for relieving the curing stress through light application techniques are to retard the polymerization rate using a delay or pulse delay mode, so-called soft start. So we can reduce the curing speed by in initially giving a short cure at a low in irradiance delay for two to five minutes and then give a final cure at a high irradiance. And this slows the cure but maintains the degree of conversion. As you see in this slide, we had a reduction in the stress due to the pulse delay mode. So there are a variety of factors that affect the polymerization stresses, some of them related to how we apply the light energy. What we do know is that the contraction stresses are mostly influenced by the shrinkage in the material and the stiffness of the actual composite but that fast curing rate also contributes to raise stress. As we look forward to future developments in composite materials and restorative materials, we look at ways that we will evaluate these materials. And probably we can define a few pr properties that are really important to look at. Mechanical properties such as flexural strength and fracture toughness because composites tend to fail by fracture as well as secondary caries. Wear and fatigue resistance are also properties that are important to evaluate. There are various physical and chemical properties, such as the dimensional change we just talked about, and its effects, the stress that's generated. The extent and depth of cure is critical to making a restoration that lasts, and it's important that the material be easy to handle and easy to use. And finally, the biological considerations are significant. The material needs to be biocompatible. We need to be able to test that always. 
And in the future, we probably will see the development of more materials that are antimicrobial or have a remineralizing potential, and therefore we'll need to be able to evaluate these properties as well.